Mavs here. They got a big time matchup with the Timberwolves tonight, and you can bet on it. Props, spread, the over unders, anything you want if you use FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your team wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. And something special for FanDuel users, this weekend they have a special Profit Boost token in the app that you can use on the UNC Duke game. Profit Boost tokens will be available before tip-off. Just view your account page and learn how you can get your Profit Boost token. For everything else on FanDuel, just make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to shoot your shot. FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Tonight, it is the first place Minnesota Timberwolves in the West coming to Cleveland to face the third-seeded Cleveland Cavaliers in the East. Minnesota, even though they just lost Carl Anthony Towns for a month to a torn meniscus, do have the number one rated defense in the entire NBA. No Mitchell tonight for the Cavs. So how do you look at this matchup? Does anything we learn tonight? By the way, it'll, be the out first, the uh, it'll be the first Cavs game I can legally watch in my house uh Tonight, since I got Fubo TV. Hey, boo, you dry snitching on yourself? <laughs> hey, bro. Um, are you guys excited? Actually, it's on Channel 43 tonight. It's free. Oh, yeah. is it? <laughs> WUA. Do I have yeah. that channel in Fubo? I don't even know. W-U-A-B. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's on uh, free TV. We, I, it's funny because the, for the first half of the season, I was like, call me for the playoffs, call me for the playoffs. Yeah. I don't care, yeah. I don't care, I don't yeah. care. And then I got interest, more interested as they played better, but I was still like, eh, whatever. And the Dallas game was exciting at the end, and obviously the Boston game was really exciting at the end. And after they lost to Atlanta, and, w- and as the and they've gotten some injuries here late, I'm like, okay, can we get to the playoffs now? <laughs> I'm not interested in Minnesota. I know it's an exciting game, but I'm like, can you get through these six weeks quickly so we can get the real basketball? That's how I'm feeling. I mean, but this is an exciting feel, matchup. There's a lot of people who feel that way. It's the way the NBA's become. But, yeah, it is a good matchup. Uh, and Minnesota's going to be without Carl Anthony Towns for a while. So, you know, we'll see how that impacts them going forward. They're a young team. I've talked before about this. There's progressions to this. And Minnesota's kind of skipped a couple of steps now oh, yeah. and jumped to number one in the West. And we'll see if they can hold that now without one of the best players. They've been overall, for much of their history as a franchise, terrible. Terrible. And so it's weird to see them as the number one seed. Yeah. Are you excited about this game, G? Oh, man. I, you know, t- t- part of me says yes, but no. Like, because, like, I like to watch the game with inside the game. And one of the things that I've been watching is how the Cavs play without uh, Donovan Mitchell. Uh, what does the rotation look like? Um, and just overall, I think the most important position you look at is Darius Garland. You know, for, you know, I was watching the show the other day and, um, Tyvis was talking about it, and he said, you know, Darius, you can't be getting these 15. Can't be get, getting 15, man. You, you, we need you to get, you know, the 20s, the 25s, the 30s, which we know you can do. But for, for me, I feel like he got the spirit of confusion right now. He's just in between playing. Like, it's tough. Like, I feel like in his mind, he remembers what it was like to just have the ball all the time and get into that flow where I could do this and get 50 points, right? Darius Garland, by the way, Darius Garland is a guy who's gotten 40s and 50s on a regular basis, right? And then now it's like, okay, you know, he comes back and Donovan Mitchell is playing, and they're obviously playing a different style of ball, so he's trying to fit it in, in, into that way. And then now Donovan is out, and now it's like, okay, you got the ball. Go do your thing. Move the ball. Let's, let's do We need more scoring. And it's just like I feel like right now his game is a little confusing. He still gets under the rim, and instead of being aggressive looking for his shot, he's looking to do, dish it off to get other guys involved because that's just his game. So for me, you know, when I'm looking at these type games, I want to see what he does. And it's not so much about how many points he gets. It's about the cohesiveness and what type of style he's pa- playing. And, and for a point guard, the truly great point guards know how to use style, pace, um, and, and, and how to get their guys involved, but then no one to take the best shots. And, and, and that's the part of, of a really good, like, it's me, he's a, he's a combo guard. I th- if you would actually use a point guard, not really. Is he better than doing it at college section? Yes. I think Kyrie Irving's a combo guard, right? He's not really a point guard. So for me, I think he just has to do a better job of understanding what type of time he's on. And just getting his shots when he, today's a day, a day when you're playing against Anthony Edwards, 
Got to have it. You, T should be thinking 25. Am I wrong, Jason? He should be thinking 25 tonight, bare minimum. I think it's dangerous to go into a game trying to force, especially when you're a point guard and you got other responsibilities. But, yeah, I mean, he needs to have uh, aggressive mentality. Yes, there, there you go, that. aggressive mentality. I don't know that I would want to put a number on it. Oh, i got to hit this number. But looking to attack, looking to score. Yeah. It's with Donovan being out, with Evan being out, you know, the injuries that they've had. I think he, yeah, he needs to be aggressive. Is Darius Garland getting fired up for this? Like, is he is, is he taking this as a personal challenge? That's not going up against is. Edwards. I don't think that's who he is. I don't know him all that well. I just, I don't, I think he just plays ball. I don't think that he would look. They don't play the same position, really. You know, I don't know that he he, he got paid. <laughs> he got his yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if a game in March against a Western Conference team, he would look at it as a personal challenge. All right. I don't, I don't know him that yeah. well. But right. I don't think you would look at okay. it. I don't get the sense he would look at the Edwards matchup as an individual showcase. But speaking of Edwards, you guys didn't see this last night. But part of the reason you should be excited is uh, this guy's coming to play in Cleveland. He's a once-in-a-generation type athlete. This was at the buzzer to block and win the game, by the way. They were up by two. That is as the buzzer expired. We'll let it play one more time. I have That's another insane. angle for you. Oh, man. He said that is the highest he's ever jumped in his entire life. His head hits the rim. You can see it from the next angle in one sec. This is to win the game, guys. To win the game. Not only does he block it, but like to not foul. That's adrenaline. To win the game. Wow. That's adrenaline at the end that of the That guy's game. coming to Cleveland tonight. If you need any other reason to tune in and watch hey, hey, what should be a really good matchup, that guy, number five. Yeah. Two things. Is he in concussion incredible. protocol after that? Don't good you, Lord. Man, he hit the rim. Don't say it like that because you, you make it seem like he's going to be on the Cavs team. He's coming to Cleveland tonight yeah. to do what? <laughs> to try to kick their ass <laughs> right. for two uh, and a half hours. Right. <laughs> the two interesting things about how how tough a play that is, one, not to foul, and two, not to get called for goaltending because it was close. Yeah. Oh, no, he got it before that. It's a perfect no, I know he block. did, but he could have easily, once he was up in the air, it was possible he could have. You know, not gotten it in time you know, and get called for gold. He also scored, I believe, seven points in the final minute as well. Back and forth. He scored. Is he Indiana definitely playing scored. tonight? Edwards, oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he doesn't like to sit games. He Good. says if he could play 82 games a year, hey, he would. let me tell you this. This is a problem. You know what my main takeaway from that is? Why is this man not in a dunk contest? See, y'all, like, the dunk contest is finished. No, it ain't. Give me Zion Williamson. Give me Edwards. And, and, and listen, John Moran, I don't care if you were injured. Get on the court. If you had those three at some point in time, that is a dunk contest. I still want to see LeBron at 40 years old. That's crazy. That'd be fun. Like, these dudes ain't – what's wrong with his – what's his problem? I can't believe LeBron never did the dunk contest. Yeah, it's disappointing. Why did he never do it? Because he doesn't have – They've any, all been done. He doesn't have any dunks. If you go back and watch the high school dunk contest, he did these regular Minimoski dunks, and he was just – his whole torso was over the rim, so they had to give it to him. I, I think the dunk contest is lame because you should only get one dunk, and that's I, it. I agree. But uh, they've all been done. Like, you, you, yeah. what else What else right, is there right, to right. do? And I just think these guys aren't interested. Maybe set your hair on fire while you're dunking. Uh, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what is left to be done. Well, if, Zion Williamson wasn't in, Zion, if Zion Williamson wasn't in a dunk contest – yeah. Then it just signals that every other person should never be in it. There's no reason why you should be the. Is dunk he contest. healthy right now? By the way, he is healthy. Is he's he? having a pretty decent season. How many games he played this year? This season, Zion Williamson has played 51 games. Oh, that's he's played good about for him. 62, so he's playing about five that's, out of hey, six that's games. That's like asking. That's that's a that's a rhetorical question. That's like asking if G. Bush is healthy. <laughs> in, what, in what regard are we talking about, yeah, dog? All right, fair enough. <laughs> you know what's crazy about yeah. Zion? Uh, Jason, let me ask you this. How many rebounds per game do you think Zion's averaging this year? Nine, eight, nine. G, I have no idea. Think? What is it? G, uh, ask G, what do you think? Oh. Probably around um, 12. Bull? Hmm. I'm trying to get inside your head about if it's surprisingly low or surprisingly high. I'm going to say seven. So he is 23 years old. Yeah. He's playing 31 minutes a game. He's averaging 5.5 rebounds per game. Oh, oh that's geez. trash. How tall is he? 6'8". Six, six, eight. Eight. Well, he's, he's six, listed eight. at 6'9". He's 6'4". I'm telling you. <laughs> he got that Rodney Rogers build. He got that Charles Elton, Barkley. Charles though. Barkley, Elton Brand build. Charles Corliss Barkley Williamson without the rebounds, build. Man. Yeah, these dudes. For be... his career. And he's a two-time All-Star. Like, when he's played, he's been very good. Like, keep in mind, when he has played... He has been very, very effective. For his career, he's averaging 25 points per game. He's averaging 6.2 rebounds per game in his career. He just doesn't what's have... what's his assists? 
uh, 4.2. So it just, it's just weird. He's one of the most explosive athletes ever. Jumps yeah. through the damn roof. His second jump, and on the offensive glass, you think he would be a much better yeah. rebounder. Why is he not any good at rebounding then? I don't watch a ton of Pelicans games. I can't tell you. Yeah. I just looked You're at not the locked games. into the Pelicans? What's the matter with you? You guys own some basketball Would show. you trade him for Evan Mobley? <laughs> no. Would I trade Zion for Evan Mobley? No. If you were the Cavs, you wouldn't do that? No. No. Think about well, it. He's too much of an injury, too, too much of an injury risk. way too much money. He's yeah. way too much of a risk. He's a health risk. Beyond yeah. injury risk, can he, my, I'm still not convinced he's not getting himself out of the league in three or four years. Mm-hmm. All right. 25 a game. Uh, one more thing to watch yeah. real quick. One more thing to watch. I was really excited to see after how Cleveland responded against Chicago in a negative way, two, or I guess it was last Wednesday. It's their first time facing a potential two-big lineup. Now, Cat's not playing, well, so it's going to be – not facing a two-big well, lineup. they could start Nas Reed, which would still be a two-big lineup. Not okay. exactly the twin towers of Cat and, and Gobert, but this is another opportunity to see – and I know it's not Allen and Mobley, but how this four out one in matches up against a two big lineup. I still have a feeling that Nas Reed will be the, the fill in starter. He, he's Cat Jr., and he's a pretty good player in his own right. Dunked on my brother in high school, like one of the nastiest posts I've ever seen, Derek. I'm sorry for bringing that up, but <laughs> absolutely posterized my little brother in high school. And uh, I'm curious to see how they do on the glass, especially if Dean Wade's in there at the starting four. We talked about the rebounding numbers of the day. Yeah. They're actually a better rebounding team with Wade in the game than they are with him on the bench. Yeah. So just another little wrinkle to watch yeah. tonight. I, by the way, the why was your brother up. guarding a center? He wasn't. They were playing a 2-3 zone. They were losing by 50, and he tried just his spot. Nas Reed came down the baseline, went right around the guy on the edge, and just it's a bad video. Did he get, like, run over? I mean, Nas Reed puts his nuts on his head, essentially. He put his nuts on his head? <laughs> well, Nas, my brother's 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and Nas Reed is 6'10", as a f- junior in high school. Yeah, oh, it's an man. unfair matchup. Was, was his hips level to that man's earlobes? Uh, I'll show you all the video after this. <laughs> i got to find it somewhere. I've not shown us that before.